Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. This will address a variety of subjects, such as the reasons for AMC's intention to eliminate the 82.5% dark P, the challenges shares present for short sellers, and much more. First, let's take a look at this. Five reasons exist for why AMC stock may break out of the X. Let's take a closer look at this box office triumph that emphasizes creative theatrical productions, tactical alliances, market expansion, and enhanced financial stability. It's interesting to observe that AMC has been disparaged in periodicals by all five of the aspects you see above. They have a solid understanding of what AMC is capable of, since we have seen and heard about their attempts to compete with AMC's inventive theater. Partnerships with well-known companies or celebrities have the power to generate excitement, draw in new clients, and eventually raise the stock price of a business. Because of this, we already know that these partnerships entail collaborations on items in addition to the artist partnerships that we have previously witnessed, like the successful ones between Taylor Swift and Beyonce. These are the strategic partnerships that we are seeing, and once more, the news articles are not picking them up, and when they do. It's always bad news because they recognize that these are critical components that AMC needs to grow in order to improve its financial health and eventually expand into new markets. As far as we are aware, the Taylor Swift Apparel Cooperation was the first to reach the top of the sales charts. The Despicable Main 4 collaborative merchandise also performed incredibly well. We've previously seen this with food and drink, candies, chocolate, popcorn, and other items, as you are all aware. As you can see, AMC is distinctly breaking into new areas in this way, and ultimately, all of these initiatives are geared toward improving financial stability. If AMC manages to reduce its debt and improve its financial stability, it could signal to investors that the company is a good investment, potentially leading to a rise in the stock price. Now, with everything we just talked about, essentially, obviously, if we make more money, we can reduce our debt. We can um, improve the financial stability, and that ultimately is what keeps AMC alive and is what keeps the shorts trapped and allows us to obviously make AMC squeeze in the future because the short will have to put up more, more synthetics, will have to make naked your AMC even more and obviously pay up even more when they don't have the capital in the future. And if you take a look at some things, why despite we're seeing all these factors working out for AMC, why are we not seeing the AMC price move up? Is because let's take a look at this, the DOP handoff exchange for July 15th of 2024. Now, firstly, straight off of exchange, we have 72% when you include all the other platform for SIBO Omed GGX. SIBO BZX and all of these other two, what we have is at a total of 82.65%. Every day offline trading exceeds online trading knowing this, you can understand why, even though we are witnessing a buy side imbalance, the stock is consistently not traded on a lighted exchange and in essence when it is. No impact on the price occurs when it hits the lit exchange. Some individuals wrongly think that because fewer people are buying AMC, the price is not growing, even though this is the apparent reason. You can also see that much of this pressure is actually coming from off exchange sources, where it has little effect on price. As you can see, it's just barcoding. As we discussed earlier, we are seeing volume and people buying, whether that be due to the buy order imbalance or the OBB. But the reason we are not seeing it go up is because of the off exchange and the regulations are turning a blind eye to this. 5.22 million orders doesn't even cause a candle silly dark pool where we've seen the prices being stagnant at this area. The SEC doesn't set a percentage cap on off exchange trading, but 82.65% dark P and off exchange trading volume for AMC is unusual and hide this AC trigger finer trade reporting and compliance engine to monitor for manipulation, whereas the FNC oversight, so like we have seen, they have always turned a blind eye towards this sort of manipulation that it's happening now again. We are not asking for 0% do pull, of course, what we want is 0% deep pull, but I guarantee you that. If we're only seeing a 20% off exchange, if we're only seeing a 30% off exchange, we will see AMC actually rise every single day, or at least almost every single day, because we know that people are buying to AMC, and we go into account for when we do see AMC's price goes up because people buying. That's obviously going to attract even more buyers now, on top of the fact we're seeing 82.65% do pull. Another thing we're seeing is AMC C spoofing going wild so constantly every single day, like you guys can see here, AMC is facing spoofing from some of the biggest players in the game, whether it's Goldman Sachs, whether it's Virtue, these are all market makers and banks who are spoofing AMC, and so you can understand why AMC is stagnant in terms of price. Now, I think it's more impressive that we are seeing AMC's price stagnating rather than decreasing. 
because like we talked about, firstly, we're facing 82.65% of exchange every single day. Secondly, we're facing large amount of spoofing every day, which again, understanding that with spoofing, it's with the intent of bring the price down. So we are attacked with methods that are trying to push the price down every single day. And yet we're stagnating and we're still even up today, 2.63%. So I think at the end of the day to me, that is a victory now, obviously is still not a reflection of the true value is not the price discovery we want for AMC. And we've always known that, but the fact that we are. Not seeing the price go down down despite everything that's being thrown away, I think is an extremely good uh, indication already. And now this is obviously talking about how we are obviously also taking away the liquidity, we're taking away the capital, and we're forcing shores to create more and more. Synthetics every single day to suppress the price of AMC. You can also see here who else is refinancing the 2026 Deep Cinemore. There are no negative rumors circulating that lenders are growing concerned for CNK's future. CNK is having problems. It was also hit hard by the pandemic and no Asian behind a TR company like AMC. So this is what we are seeing in terms of what's happening with one of our competitors now. When we saw the fact that AMC was talking to his lenders about the debt, we were getting negative news. Now bear in mind AMC. Whether it's extending, whether it's reducing their debt, it's all good news. These are news that showing that AMC are in a good position and by reducing our debt, it also obviously shows that we have a good and healthy cash pile. By extending our debt, it means that our lenders understand that AMC has a good future, hence why they're willing to extend our debt. So these are obviously all good news for AMC, but yet the news articles were trying to make it out like it was the end of the world for AMC, like it was going bankrupt now. When you take a look at Cinemore, a company that is owned over by 100% by institutions. Yet when they are reducing the debt or refinancing its deb, all you can see are just good news about um Cinemore and no negative news. And this is when you can understand the difference between AMC and Cinemore. And I think you know, just like stated out here by Biotech, a very key part is that there is no Asian behind um this true owned company, this institutional owned company, unlike AMC, where we are obviously backed by a massive foundation of retail investors. Remember, we have you, you know, a massive foundation of shareholders for AMC. In addition, we have people who are excited to go to AMC theaters. Since they are endorsing AMC, it is evident that AMC is in a better position than Cinemore, independent of technology factors or the company's general attitude. We've already seen the effect that these calls and the money can have when they obviously expire or go to wherever they're exercised. And how that will definitely squeeze a gamma squeeze. AMC and GME have both experienced this, which is why they always try to push it below a certain price to avoid feeling pressured. However, that's not the only reason that I believe AMC will be the largest in the market going forward. Let's also take a look at this. It will hurt a lot if we don't close above $6 this Friday. As we've discussed, climbing to great heights will be enjoyable once the cost matches perseverance. For precisely this reason, we are able to understand why people are investing in AMC. Hence, we are aware that manipulation is the source of price increases in AMC, whether they occur suddenly or gradually. If the LBV is at an all-time high, CES should normally be higher since it indicates that investors are both buying and holding onto their shares. This will indicate a price increase, but the fact that AMC isn't observing it indicates that there is currently obvious repression and manipulation taking place. This will also make sense when we discuss the operation of short constrained shares. We currently have cost stock and AMC Saint. GAM stock, both of which seem to have a rising basket on the ETF. Der SL rolls short positions in two ways by covering short positions and by shutting the basket when delivery fails. In high-frequency trading, algorithms like Black Cross Aladdin are employed because short sellers, manufacturers, banks, and clearing houses are at significant risk. To learn more about how these people are susceptible, click this link. Individual investors could never move free stocks in this way all at once. Offers new tokenized stocks, such as GAE fully backed by shares, through its cryptocurrency organization. As you can see, not all of the backed items that are being provided currently have proof of reserves available. Despite this, they are still trying to sell GME tokens, which they claim are backed. I have tried a quick search and haven't been able to find anything better than this. This is intriguing because upon closer inspection, it bears witness to a similar situation that occurred previously with Bitpanda, FTX, and other companies. All of them offer GME and AMC tokens, which were ostensibly backed one-to-one, -one, but the flow of those tokens exceeded the number of shares. In order to understand this, you must realize that they are essentially offering GME shares that they are backed by, and that they are offering GME tokens that they claim are backed by the shares. Under normal circumstances, such as when FDX did it, at least they said that they own these shares now, they don't own these shares now, they don't own these shares, but they said they own these shares. If you look even closer, 
The balance sheet of backed from offering token at stocks of GME and others shows that they are borrowing shares from someone else to back the shares they are selling to someone else, which is a liability to them. What's happening is that they are even bothering to claim that we own the shares, claiming that they belong to other people, and that we are using them as evidence that we have access to GME shares. As you can see, this is obviously absurd, and this is just another way that GME is being suppressed to suppress AMC. It's going to end the same way that FTX and Banda did, and we're going to witness another broker fail because they were unable to locate real GME shares and had to produce more synthetics in naked shorts. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.